like it. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit. Me get up. First shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy. Yeah, glad we're walking. And this year is our party. My posse's been on Broadway. And we did it all way. Chrome music. I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yeah, I'm on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Razorback cheerleaders, Razorback dance team and mascots, and the best band in college basketball, the Hog Wild Band! What a crowd, what a great night. Welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special time to be a Razorback. And you are here tonight to witness us introduce the 14th head coach 
in Razorback basketball history, Coach John Calipari. I know you're ready. Now we got a lot of people here I want to introduce before we get started. We've, we've got several dignitaries, several people that we are honored to be with us tonight. I'd like to ask our Arkansas, our University of Arkansas Board of Trustees to stand as I call their names and we're going to recognize them. Tommy Boyer, Steve Cox, Ted Dickey, Kelly Eichler, Dr. Ed Pryor, Kevin Crass, Jeremy Wilson. We thank all of you for being here with us tonight. I wish all of you could see what I see right now. This is awesome to see all of you here tonight. Just, just a great evening, and it's going to be a lot of fun as we meet our new coach. We're very pleased to be joined tonight by our chancellor, Dr. Charles Robinson, and his wife, Renelda. If you've been to Razorback Games, thank you. If you've been to Razorback Games, you know Dr. Robinson is a regular. He's there quite often. We appreciate your leadership. We appreciate your support. And certainly are grateful that, that you are here tonight. The uh, Chancellor's Strategic Operations Group is here tonight, and I'd like to invite you to stand, if you would. I know many of you are here. Thank you for your service. I'd also like to recognize our faculty athletic representative, Paul Adams. Paul, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Paul. Now we're going to hear from our vice chancellor and our director of athletics in just a moment, but I do want to introduce his wife, Jennifer, if she would stand and be recognized, please. Thank you, Jennifer. In a few moments, Coach Cow will officially join the ranks of some incredible Razorback head coaches here at the University of Arkansas. Now, some are on the road as we speak. They're not able to be with us tonight, but many of them are. Please hold your applause until I've recognized them all. Our head football coach, Sam Pittman, is here tonight. Our baseball coach, Dave Van Horn, is here. Our softball coach, Courtney Dyfel, is here tonight. Welcome, Coach Dyfel. Our soccer coach, Colby Hale, is here tonight. Our men's tennis coach, Jay Udwadia, is here tonight. Our women's track and field coach, Chris Johnson, is with us this evening. Our women's basketball coach, Mike Neighbors, is here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, your Razorback head coaches. I'd like to recognize many of our former players. We've got a lot of former players who are here tonight. I've got a list. I hope I have all of them. If some of you have come in and we don't call your name, please stand and we will recognize you nevertheless. Dr. Jim Counts, if you would stand as I call your name. Todd Day. Blake Eddins, Kamani Johnson, Ron Brewer Sr., Coach Ronnie Brewer, Corey Beck, Joe Johnson. Tommy Boyer. Jimmy Dykes. Mike Young. John Inksco. Joe Klein. Reggie Merritt. 
and Manny Watkins. If others have come in and I've not called your name, we're glad you're here tonight. We appreciate you, and this is your night, too. It's a proud day to be in Arkansas, isn't it? Tonight, we officially welcome Coach Calipari and his wife, Ellen, to the state of Arkansas. And at this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium, actually, I'd like you to welcome to the podium a man who has worked tirelessly to find our next leader. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Vice Chancellor, our Director of Athletics, Hunter Urechek. I think we made the right choice. Wow, you guys know that we're not playing Kentucky in basketball tonight, right? This is amazing, amazing. It is a, another great day to be an Arkansas Razorback. And as your director of athletics, I say that with great confidence tonight as I think about our number one ranked baseball team. Our number one ranked women's track and field team. Our number two ranked men's track and field team. Our eighth ranked women's golf program. Our 10th ranked gymnastics program that disadvanced to the Elite Eight our 11th ranked men's golf team, our 14th ranked softball team. In today's historic hiring of John Calipari as our head men's basketball coach. I look forward to introducing you to Coach Cal in a few minutes, but first I wanted to take the opportunity to recognize several people. First, I would like to recognize and thank Coach Eric Musselman, his wife, and his wife, Danielle. During the past five seasons, Coach Muss, with Danielle by his side, elevated our program back to one of national prominence and ensured that we were able to attract a Hall of Fame coach to take his place. I wanted to thank UA System President, Dr. Don Bobbitt, our University Chancellor, Charles Robinson, by the way, celebrating his birthday tonight. <laughs> by the way, Chancellor, this is my birthday present to you, okay? <laughs> and of course, the University of System Board of Trustees for their support throughout this process. I wanted to specifically thank Board of Trustee member Ted Dickey, who represented the board and worked with me directly on this search. Uh, the Dickey family has been serving our state for generations, and I am appreciative of Ted's service to our university and to me personally during this process. Thank you, Ted. Also want to acknowledge our senior associate athletic director, Matt Trantham, for his assistance in the search process. Matt, I think he's backstage. And a huge and special thank you to our Department of Athletics University Associate General Counsel, Matt McCoy, and Coach Cal's attorney, Tom Mars, also a UA Law graduate, who worked together to get an agreement in place. Matt and Tom, thank you very much. Matt, right here. And I certainly want to thank my entire family, especially Jennifer and my youngest son, Brooks, who are here tonight. Brooks, stand up. There you go. 
And there are so many others who played a part, but I want to make sure I recognize two key people and their families who played a significant role in our ability to hire Coach Cal. I am deeply appreciative to Mr. John Tyson for serving as the conduit. Chicken fry and cold beer on a Friday night. <laughs> pair of jeans that fit just right and a radio. Process, John served as a conduit. He made an, an initial connection between myself and Coach Cal to talk about this opportunity. Coach Cal and John had been dear friends for years, and that personal relationship was an incredible resource for me to better understand Coach Cal and what might attract him to the University of Arkansas. But this commitment was far more than just making a connection. John Tyson and his family are from here in Northwest Arkansas and Warren Stevens and his family from Central Arkansas joined forces together to make certain we could offer the type of package that would lure Coach Cal to Fayetteville. Each of these families understands how important this program is to the entire state. Their generosity helped galvanize their state this week with great anticipation of the future success of our Razorback basketball program. So thank you to John, John Randall, and Olivia Tyson who are able to join us tonight and to Warren, Harriet, Miles, John, and Laura Stevens for demonstrating that we are truly all one Razorback. <laughs> and let me be clear, because there's a lot of rumors and misinformation out there. These two families have helped us set the table to make this historic hire possible. But I know their expectation and their hope is people across this state will join them and make sure we are able to continue to provide the tools that are needed not only to have success in men's basketball, but the tools for us to continue to have the success we have enjoyed across our 19 sports programs. All right, that's the end of my thank yous. Now on to Coach Cap. So as I set out to find the next leader of our men's basketball program, I received a lot of advice. <laughs> some was solicited, some was unsolicited on what we needed or in who should be our next head coach. But I knew I wanted to find a proven winner. I wanted to find someone who would embrace, the Arkansas, embrace Arkansas and the opportunities to build on a rich tradition that includes 22 conference titles, 14 Sweet 16 appearances, 11 Elite Eight appearances, six Final Fours, and a 1994 NCAA championship. We needed to find a coach that understands the current environment of college athletics and how to recruit elite talent. We needed someone who can develop players for success at the college level and prepare them for success in the NBA. We needed someone who would bring national prestige to the University of Arkansas, and we needed someone to generate excitement around, among Razorback Nation. Check that box for sure, right? And finally, I wanted to find someone who shared my vision that this program could return to the Final Four and win a national championship. In the course of our great history, we have been blessed to have tremendous players and legendary coaches. From Eddie Sutton to Nolan Richardson, Arkansas has been the home to Hall of Fame coaches. Today, we add another Hall of Fame coach to that distinguished list, a Naismith Hall of Fame coach and someone that recently was selected as the 2024 John R. Wooden Legends of Coaching recipient. I'm excited for us to, I'm excited for us to formally introduce Coach Cal to this state 
in the entire Razorback Nation. So without further ado, take it away, John George. Razorback fans, let's stand up and call those hogs! where it is about as loud as a building can get. You're not entertained! The loudest arena to start a game I've ever been in. Uh, this is a hard place. You don't come here expecting to win. Let me tell you that. The name, the brand, the identity that he brings to a program that has a storied, rich tradition, an outstanding fan base in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The big recruits will follow and winning will follow. You go to Kentucky. What made you go to Kentucky? Coach Cal. I love Kyle. I still talk to Kyle to this day. You came in, you earned everything he made you work. Playing for Kyle was, that relationship lasts forever. Our Calipari gets to go to a proud program with Final Four National Championship pedigree. With the first pick in the 2010 NBA Draft, the Washington Wizards select John Wall. The New Orleans Hornets select Anthony Davis, Julius Randle, Kelton Johnson, Devin Booker, Jamal Murray, De'Aaron Fox, Bam Adebayo, Jay Gilgis Alexander, Carl Anthony Town. From the universe. That's a program that is built to win. Arkansas needed an adrenaline goal. John Calipari is going to give them that. And now, let's welcome to the court, joined by his wife, Ellen, the head coach of your Arkansas Razorbacks, John Calipari! and I know you think this is a great program. Why not you? Why not me? Yeah, why not you? Huh. Now, from that meeting, I left and went west. We stayed in touch a little bit. I just want everybody to know here, I didn't want anything out until after the national championship game that we were even talking because I didn't think it was fair for those two teams and those coaches and those players and those programs. 
Somebody here leaked it out, though. I don't know who leaked it out, but someone did. But Hunter, we didn't speak about it because it wasn't fair for those teams. Um, I'll tell you what, what happened to me. We, we were out west, and uh, we had a priest with us, a Catholic priest. He gave mass one morning in his room. And I said to him, Father, I've got to decide what I'm going to do here. One is Arkansas, the other is Kentucky. And he told me, go for an hour walk and have in your mind, you're the Arkansas coach. And then on the way back, that you're the Kentucky coach. And tell me, you, you'll see what moves your heart and what you want to do. And I did that. And I'll be honest, when I thought about coming here and building this program and making it something special, it got me excited. I, I got to say this, though. Um, and again, in 2007, I met with Coach Broyles. And we talked. I was in Memphis at the time. And I've just got to tell you, there's a difference now than leaving a job back then. Back then, you had players that were there to play for you, to be with you, to help groom them to get ready for what their future was. And if you left, they were stuck there. They couldn't leave. They had to play for whoever the coach was. And John got mad at me. I said, I'm not leaving these kids. And it was Derrick Rose. Antonio Anderson, Chris Douglas Roberts, Joey Dorsey, Robert Dozier, Sean Taggart. I mean, we had a great group. But it wasn't about winning and losing. It was about leaving them. It happened to be at uh, Massachusetts with Marcus Camby. We lost to Eddie Sutton's Oklahoma State team in big country in the Elite Eight. He said, I'm going to stay, Coach. I'm not ready. And I said, well, then I'm going to stay with you. There were a couple things that were happening for me. The next year, we go to the Final Four, lose to a Kentucky team. I think we got screwed, but that's another story. <laughs> and he says, I'm going to do this. And I went and said, you know what? I'm going to go too. And I went to the Nets. You know who I got to coach at the Nets? Joe Klein. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, he got me fired. But, <laughs> but, they, they were saying you traded for Joe Klein. No, he was in the trade. <laughs> but I got to tell you one story. So, and Joe will tell you this is true. So I trade for him. He walks into my office in the arena. We're getting ready to play a game. He says, uh, Coach, I'm Joe Klein. You just traded for me. I said, Joe, I don't have time to talk to you, so I'll see you after the game. He said, should I put a uniform on? And I said, yeah, but you're not going to get in. But go ahead, warm up and be around. You know what happens. My center gets in foul trouble. Another kid gets hurt. I look at Joe. He looks at me. I look at Joe. He looks at me. And I said, go in. We'll run floppy. Anybody that ever, Joe Johnson's here, you know, Ron, you know what floppy is. That's universal. Anybody can do it. Joe struggled with it, but anybody could do it. <laughs> so I said, go in. And I could tell you other stories. But he walked by me and stopped and turned back and said, I'm Joe Klein. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> and then went in the game. And I had an absolute, he and I have been friends since that time. He got me fired, but it was good because I could get back to what I do best. I'm sorry, Joe. I had to do that. <laughs> it must have been hard to leave Kentucky. What was that like? It was. I mean, we've been there 15 years, folks. 15 years. And great times, great achievements. 40 players to the NBA, 30 kids graduated. 30 kids graduated. I mean, um, I love that state. I love the governor. The people are the salt of the earth. They're generous. 
They're kind. They grew up kind of like we did. They grew up like we did. And my wife and I, Ellen, where are you, Ellen? Stand up. There you are. Stand up and you can see my wife. Now, you, from this point on, she is the princess. That's what she is. She's a princess. She, uh, I got, I'm off point here, but she makes brownies at every birthday. She wants the players at the house all the time. If they're not there, why aren't they here? And it's been that way from UMass to Memphis. Joe, did anybody come to the house in the nest? No. Yeah. But, and in Kentucky. And she becomes their mom away from home. So she's a great lady, great coach's wife. She's the best. And, and I got my son here, Brad. Brad played for me for three years at Kentucky, he graduated, and he put his name in the portal. So he was the first coach's son that said, I'm out. <laughs> and he went and played at Detroit for Mike Davis and had a terrific career and has done good and uh, was at Vanderbilt with uh, Jerry Stackhouse last year and did a great job of coaching. Um, but Kentucky's the bluest of blue. There's only a few schools like that, and I hate to tell you, Arkansas is one of them. It is. But I, all, I, all I can tell you, we loved our time there. We gave every ounce of everything we had to that job that stayed in that school. So I walk away sad, but knowing no regrets. We left nothing on the table. There's not a whole lot more we could have tried to do. If you look around, that's all right, you can applaud, go ahead. <laughs> Obviously, there are a lot of Razorback fans. You look around the building and see that. What do you know about Arkansas? What, what, what's attracted you to this place? Well, it started with Coach Broyles. I mean, who he was, what he stood for. Um, when I met him, I was kind of intimidated when I met him. And then, is Marcia Cohn here? Is she here? Where's Marcia? All right, there's Marcia. Her husband, David Cohen, ran a golf tournament up in Forest City, and Coach would play in it. He had the biggest legs and could hit a golf ball, even later in his life, would hit the. I'm like, well, how old is he hitting the ball that far? But he was the one that met with me and talked to me. And um, so it started there. I mean, I would tell you, Coach Sutton, for some reason, kind of took me under his wing. And I have no idea. I just saw Steven. Um, and we talked about it. I was like the last person to talk to him before he passed away. And I wanted to help him in the Hall of Fame earlier than they did. But he did get to hear that he was inducted in the Hall of Fame before he passed, which was a great thing. I see, I see Ron Brewer, Sidney Moncrief. You have, you know, Marvin Delft. He did it with Arkansas players. And how he did it in Barnhill, I have no idea. But what he did here was the basis of what this became. And then Coach Richardson, he and I talked this morning. And Hunter will tell you, and John, I, one thing I ask, I want to know what Coach Richardson thinks of me taking this job. I need to know. And he says, <laughs> and he and I talked today. Um, I'm going to send out to all of you a poster that's in my home office on the wall. I forgot it was there, it was behind me. And one of my staff said, look at that. Was, any, was anyone here at the 1994 game in Springfield, the Hall of Fame game? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was UMass and Arkansas the year after they won the national title. That year they went to the championship game. It's a poster of Coach Richardson, he looked at it, he said, that don't look like me. It does look like him. He's, he's, he's in his seat looking mean. 
have me screaming. You have Corliss in it, Lou Rowe. What was the score of that game, by the way? A lot to a little. <laughs> yeah, it was 114 to like 80, but that's all right. <laughs> it was in Springfield. But I think Corey Beck's here. Where's Corey? Corey played on that team. Um, Scotty Thurman, you know, the shots he made. I mean, come on. And it wasn't just who he coached, it's how he coached and how they changed the game to that point of we're coming after you, 40 minutes of hell, this is what we're doing. And the excitement in this building, it was hard to win a game if you were an opponent in here because you knew they're coming at you, teeth and feet, here they come. Um, I will tell you that he challenged his kids but Corey, you gotta say, but he cared. He challenged them, but he cared. Did he hold you accountable? He held you accountable twice, right? Like once in the same time, never then. But he cared about him. And in my memory of all that, Muss here five years. You gotta know, Muss did a heck of a job here now. <laughs> Two elite eights. He got this thing back on track, the Sweet 16, and again, you know, the, the opportunity to follow all that, and again, you could say, well, rebuild, yeah, there may not be a roster, I gotta put a roster together. No, you're laughing, that's not funny. I just, I just met with the team. There were three guys in there. And they were in the portal. So we got, we got work to do. And, and the only thing that I want to tell you is I'm not that guy that has a magic wand. That's not who I am. I'm the grinder that comes every day. And when you watch my team at the beginning of the year to the end, you say, wow, they got better. Individual players got better. They become a better team to put them in the best position. So, Finally, we've, we've watched you coach. We've watched your teams play. Tell us about you. Tell us about Coach Cal away from all this. Well, as a player, I was small, but I was slow. So, <laughs> um, I'm a gatherer. I'm, you know, I see uh, Dakari's brother down there. How's mom doing? You tell her I asked for, okay? Um, I bring people together. It's what I've always tried to do. Um, we get this thing going and we get this thing done. I want thousands of people to say, without me, this doesn't happen. Thousands. Not just one, two, five, not my staff. It was everybody came together and say, without me, none of this happens. I look at trying to create that love affair, a love affair between this program and this campus, this program and this state. I know this program's important to the state. All these programs are important to the state. And, uh, I got to tell you, so you understand, my parents, my dad worked in the mill in Western PA, and then he was a baggage handler. Worked till the age of 70, still looking strong at 91. He's thrown, you know. My mom worked in the cafeteria at the junior high school. She had the white suit and sold the ice cream. We grew up Friday to Friday. You guys know what Friday, some of you young people don't know what Friday to Friday is. You're getting a paycheck and you're making it till the next Friday. Thursday is a tough day. It's how I grew up, but you know what? No credit cards, layaway, all the stuff. I wouldn't want to grow up any other way. You knew you had to work or you did not eat. And I say I'm a grinder. Um, that's what I am. I, look. I told my son today, I don't know why 
you look at, I, I'm telling you, my dad was a baggage handler. My mom worked there. I wasn't a great player. Please, I am just, my friends call me Johnny. Johnny Calipari. I'm not that guy that, you know, it's me bringing everybody together, bringing a staff together, gathering people, getting a team to understand how you have to work. You ready for this? Together. Not work by yourself. You do it together. And, and then having a dream and a burning desire to compete for championships. Why am I here? That's why I'm here. And, and let me just say one, one more thing. Um, I'm always going to be a player's first coach. I'm sorry. It's about the players. I know for some reason, people think you can't really be a coach that wants to win if you're about the players. And I, no, you can do both. You can be, every decision I will make will be, are, is this the best decision for these guys? Not me as a staff, not, is it the best decision for them? When we're doing things, how we're doing things. You saw my team this year, we played totally different. Why? It was the best way for that team to play. We couldn't guard as well as we needed to, but we could really score. But it was how they had to play. And all I can tell you is I won't change that. It does change recruiting because of this transfer portal. You can't have as many freshmen as you usually have. You have your group of freshmen, you have a group of returning players, and you have a couple transfers that can impact it. Sometimes they're the, the alpha dog, that guy coming in. But even those guys would come here for one reason. How do you make me better, coach? I want to go to the next level. Can you help me? If I see a player that I don't think I can help, I'm being honest, I probably won't. Not that he's not a good player. I don't want to use some young man and say, yeah, you're going to set screens and dive on the floor. No. How do I help him get better? That is what my job is, to prepare them for life after basketball, to tell them how they create joy in their life. Do something for somebody else, and you'll figure out how you create joy in your life. The one thing Coach Riley, Pat Riley, said to me, the best compliment, Cal, I can give you is your team, your players come in this league and they're all good teammates. Think about that. For me as a coach, that was the best compliment I can get. Yeah, they're in that league, they're getting second deals, they're doing all this stuff, yet they're great teammates. That's what I want to have, the base of what we're doing here, the culture of what we're trying to do here. Ladies and gentlemen, he's our coach now, Coach John Calipari. <laughs> coach, come on up. I want to go down and say hello to the coaches real quick. I hope they didn't do this to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks. And you won. What was that score today? Congrats, coach. I can't wait to work with you. Nice to see you. Coach, this is my coach. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap it up, Coach Calipari is going to be going and conducting his first press conference. As the Razorback head coach, he's also going to be flying to Los Angeles tomorrow to receive the John R. Wooden Award for Legends of Coaching. So we certainly congratulate him for that. Again, we welcome his wonderful wife, Ellen, son, Brad. We thank all of you for being here tonight. Hunter Juracek, Jennifer, go Hawks! Thanks for being here.
Um, Hunter, w w when you talked to John initially, did you really think you had a realistic shot? And, and kind of, uh, uh, what, what was that like initially? It sounded like he was giving you guys candidates, and then you said, well, what, what about you? Right. He, can, he can't say no until I ask him the question to begin with, right, Bob? So if I don't ask him the question during that meeting, how about you? Are you interested in our job? I mean, he spent 15, 20 minutes bragging about how great of a job this was. Um, and so if it's so great of a job, why don't you want it? And he kind of sat back in his chair a little bit and I think started to, to think about that. So I'm sitting in the presence of a Hall of Fame coach talking about other coaches for my job and he's telling me how great of a job this is. If I'm not doing my job, if I don't ask him if he's interested, right? Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. We've heard varying reports about what the NIL is going to look like for men's basketball. What can sure. you say to, to that? I will say that uh, Coach Cal and I talked about NIL robustly. We've talked about it on the plane. Uh, him and I are on the same page of where it needs to be for us to be competitive. Uh, we've got s some ways to go to get there. Um, it, reports make it sound like it is a done deal and the money's in the bank. Um, what I will tell you, uh, that's not the case. Uh, we've got a pretty good program in place, but we're going to need the help uh, from people across this state uh, to make sure that we give Coach Cal the tools that he needs to put a great team on the floor, not only this year, but next year and the following year. Um, so uh, him and I are on the same page of what it needs to be, and it's my job to give him the tools to make sure that he can be successful. A week between, a, a week between jobs, one leaving, one coming in, did you ever envision getting through it that quick and getting a grand slam home run to come talk about? Yeah, well, I mean, if you read the uh, reports, I didn't have it done by Saturday, and that wasn't quick enough, right? <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it, it took a little longer than maybe you wanted because I had to let him have time for this opportunity to marinate. And he, he was very intentional about he did not want to step on the national championship game on Monday night. And I know he was really disappointed when it leaked out I'm on here. Sunday night. It leaked from here. Not yeah. My way. So um, he, he was disappointed because um, he didn't want to overshadow what those young men and coaches from Purdue and UConn had gotten. So it took a little bit longer because uh, we were trying to be respectful of that game. And I was trying to be respectful of his consideration for this position. Obviously, we, we know John's an elite recruiter, but he really doesn't have a scholarship player right now. How confident are you that he can get a, a quality team put together in a pr pretty short period of time? Bob, I'll give you a short answer to that. I'm really confident that he can put a great team together pretty quickly. Hunter, how does this hire and the financial commitment involved impact your plans for Bud Walton Arena? Well, um, two separate funds, quite honestly. I mean, we're going to go on a capital campaign eventually once we get a final design for the renovation to Bud Walton Arena. Um, and so that's a totally separate capital campaign that we'll undertake sometime later this year. So I don't foresee it impacting the renovation to Bud Walton Arena. But what we have to make sure that uh, right now um, investing in bricks and mortar may not be the best decision as opposed to investing in our student athletes. And so I've really got to balance those two options. Take it a two-parter. Two yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead, two, Bob. Two-part. Um, when, when, when John asked him, which obviously that was a smart thing to do, when he expressed interest, what, what, was, what was your reaction? Um, and then if you want to name names, that's great, but I'm curious how many guys you talked to, how many coaches you talked to for, for the job. You know, the, the, the serious conversation. Yeah. Well, you guys have been with me through, I'll answer the second one first, through now two men's basketball searches and one football search. Uh, and I'm very thorough in that search process. It's a very tight, closed search process, but I don't just zero in on one person. Um, I didn't know for sure if he was going to take the job. And so I had to keep my search on going uh, while he was uh, taking in consideration the opportunity that was in front of him. So um, I talked to, I don't know, Bob, eight to ten different coaches about this job. And here's what I want to be clear about. In spite of the reports, there was only one person offered this job, and he's sitting right next to me. And I think it's interesting that his name never got out during the process because he wanted this job in the end. He wasn't looking for something else at his institution that he was at. All right, thank you, Hunter. Coach? 
What is it about Arkansas? Because everybody knows what you bring to the table, household name. What is it about Arkansas that b brings you to the thought that you can get another Final Four in your resume at your fourth stop? Um, I called Calvin Sampson. He and I are dear friends. And I said, tell me about Hunter. Well, he almost jumped through the phone. And I said, T what are you talking about? I talked to his assistant who used to work for me. Bilal, and he said, when you need things done, then he goes and do, does it. He's, he's, what can I do to help you? And then we're going to get it done. I mean, what he did at Houston, the building, the practice facility, all the stuff, and what Kelvin needed so he could coach basketball. Um, that got me to where I had to listen because I'm going to say it again. Basketball coaches win games administrations win championships and you know why because they want to and it's important to them and when we the, the some of the phone conversations because the meeting we had and as a matter of fact he'll tell you the the, the offer thing w how much time did we spend on it you and I 15 minutes it was 15 minutes because I got what I needed to hear um, we spent no time on that um, and, you know, but it was a commitment to what he wanted to do. And working with somebody, you know, he's a basketball player. Were you any good? Not very good. Okay, was neither, like neither was I either, so we're good. We're on the same page. But, you know, and I'm, I'm excited about this. This program, you talk about some of the best jobs in the country. In basketball, this is one of them. We can say what we want. This is one of them. This is a state that I'm comfortable in. It's how I grew up. I can't wait to go around the state and meet people and be in uh, situations where they're going to say he's a regular guy, I hope. I don't think I'm this magician. I don't. People look at me different than I look at myself. And this thing, when we sat down, somebody said, what about Wednesday? Never entered my mind about coaching. Or, one week ago. It never entered my mind. Thursday night was a, hey, I need you, my good friend John Tyson, who whatever John Tyson would ask me to do, I'm doing. I need you to meet with our AD. He's going to go through some stuff. I want you to talk to him and help him out. He's a good man. You're going to love meeting him. And we did. And then it was like all of a sudden, hey, what? Saturday and Sunday, we did. We just, I said, I'm not doing anything during this championship. These kids have done too much. They deserve it. It got out, and it cut, but we didn't speak. Neither one of us spoke. Like, we're not talking about it. You can insinuate all you want. And then I needed a day, and then it was Sunday or uh, Tuesday morning, and it was okay, let's go with this. So, um, you know, to be at a place like this, to do what I was able to do at Kentucky, I was happy. I mean, I loved it there. My wife loved it there. You know what? 15 years I was there. Did everything I could. Gave every ounce of everything I could. And you know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. So now, I got to... Hunter's really extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. And some of it is a little bit of everything, but we will. It may take a little longer because there are kids that put their name in the NBA draft that are going to go through some of the process, which means do you wait for that kid or do you go take somebody that's not quite as good and you're going to be juggling balls? That's what we do now. So, and I, I said it out there, my initial thing when he asked me the question, I can't leave this team, the players. And, and it was Kelvin that said to me, what are you talking about? They can go wherever they want. They can go wherever they want if you stay. If you go or stay. They can go to another school, they can stay, they can go pro, they can do what they want now. 
And I said, you know what? I want to be happy with this. And I want to go and say, let's do this together. And I told Hunter, it's, you got, you, administrations win championships. Let's do this together. I love seeing the president out there. The chancellor, is your pre chancellor. chancellor out there. I'm sorry. Um, so it was fun. Hey, John Anthony Christensen, WholeHogSports.com. You mentioned a little bit, you know, roster building and construction along those lines. Can you just talk about what you're looking at for your first roster here at Arkansas? What are the qualities you're looking at in players and along those lines? Um, the if you're not into basketball, you won't come here. If you're smoking, drinking, clubbing, chasing, this is about being at a place that is zeroed in on a culture that creates professional habits, and that includes academically. I mean, we didn't have any issues. I know we oh, you had one-year players. That, yeah, but they all finished the term. We didn't have any APR problems. We had 32 kids graduate. We had six graduate in three years. You can do all that. You can care about the kids and still win. Um, what's changed a little bit is that kids are older. Now, do you know why they're older? Why do you think we played against a 26-year-old in the NCAA tournament, like my 19-year-olds? Why was that? COVID a little bit. They're given a bunch of waivers, and no one wants to leave because NIL. I'm going to stay here. I'll make more here than I would going and getting a job, and I'm still playing basketball. So that's one of the issues, which means physical toughness and physicality matter more now than ever before. Now, you can have freshmen, but they better be physically tough. Um, the transfer portal, you're getting some older players. But the other thing you have to understand, both Purdue and Connecticut had players that had been in their program three years. They didn't leave. They were there three years. So it's not just go get a transfer because a transfer is from one year to many times. Does that answer? Hey, Coach. Trey Biddy with Hog Sports, 24-7 Sports. I was curious about your, your staff. And obviously, the dead period ends, I think, Friday starts back up with being able to contact. Like, how do, where do you go with bringing your staff together and, and jumping into the world of recruiting and transfer portal? That's one of the first things i got to get done. And the only thing I can tell you, I, I had advice from Pat Nardelli, who's probably watching this, when I was in Moon Township and I was working at Pitt and I grew up in Moon Township and he was one of our, the people that supported the men's basketball in high school, okay? And I was taking the UMass job and he grabbed me and said, let me tell you something, kid. You can have a bad deal with good people because stuff happens but you can never have a good deal with bad people. I don't care what it smells like, what they look like, who they can bring to you. Stay away from bad people, whether it's staff or players, and that's what I've tried to do. I just, if I, it's a recruit, I'll walk. If it's a staff member, I may meet them once or twice, and that's it. I'm not, we're not going that way. Whatever we do, we'll have good people who are driven and wired, uh, knowing that there's an expectation here and not being afraid of it. I told my wife, you really want to do this? Yep. You're brave. You're courageous. We're going to go, you know. And, and again, nothing that happened about me coming here. I was running to this. Fans don't move me that way. Do we have some fans here that will be a little riled up? It's everywhere in the country. It's not just at Kentucky, Arkansas, or wherever else you want to. There, like I said, if, if I'm not going to take – or, or uh, ask for somebody's advice, I'm certainly not going to listen to their criticism. So it is part of what we do. This fan base is so engaged, I love it. I don't think I'm going to have to sell tickets, am I? I don't think you will. Yeah. Thank you. We'll sell them for you. There you go. Arkansas Democrat is that I'm still trying to wrap my mind about seeing you in that Razorback red. But uh, this is kind of, kind of a two part. Can I tell you, I went on the plane and he had this. I had a dark blue thing on and I was in the back by myself because I was trying to get ready for this. And his wife and my wife and they're in the middle and, and I took my thing off 
the sweat, and I was putting this on, and somebody peeked their head. I said, I am not Eric Musselman. You do not want to look back here. <laughs> and I said, and if you did look back here, you're going to turn the plane around and go back to Lexington. Drop him off. Um, wh wh when did you actually tell Hunter yes? Probably Monday night. But I was, my, my thing to him probably at some point on Sunday was, look, I feel really good. Just give me time. This is going to play. Just, but I think Monday night was when it was done. But it was probably 11 o'clock at night or later. And, um, and then, you know, Tuesday morning, you know, I did the uh, video and then, you know, my wife did a video, and then we did this. You alluded to it. Can you imagine there. it happened in like three days, four days? I guess it did. Um, you, you alluded to it out there. I mean, you're, you're not because of you personally, because you're a Kentucky coach, you know, you got booed a lot and all that. Did, could you ever imagine a scenario where you'd be here you know, as the Arkansas coach and being cheered and all that. And then when, when, no, when you had a No, I could not ever envision yeah. that. It was a it was good feeling, to be honest with you, but no. And, and then when you talked to Coach Burroughs back in 07, that's when Dana Altman took the job, so I hope things work out better than that did. But, but um, could you imagine 17 years later you'd, you'd be back here w with the job? I, I didn't think so Wednesday because it never entered my mind. I wasn't looking for jobs. There were some other people that called me during this period of time. I don't know if they knew, well, maybe he wants to leave. They lost a game. and I mean, one game doesn't make a career or what you've done. So I wasn't saying looking or, you know, and then all of a sudden we meet. I really felt good about him. I liked the vibe. I liked what I was hearing. Then it kind of played from there. But um, the, the, that press conference, I'd never seen anything like it. Like, that right there was, for me, like, we got off the plane. I, I was looking for Joe Biden. I'm like, where, what is going <laughs> on here? Uh, Courtney Mims, Pig Trail Nation. Coach, you mentioned, and you joked about it a little bit, maybe not joking, in your eyes that there is no roster here. With NIL, the transfer portal, how do you plan on hitting the ground running there? I can't tell you that. <laughs> be telling everybody else that. Well, look, there's uh, – there's going to be enough kids that would want to play here for us that will be fine. I really believe that. And, uh, you know, whether I was at UMass or Memphis or at Kentucky, we, you know, kids want to play for us. And hopefully it's because we, we put them first and their families know it. Southwest Times record, a lot of – your former players, the NBA guys, reached out, you know, commenting and stuff, and it seemed, you know, that loyalty to you, to not only Kentucky but you individually. How much did that mean to you, and how much does that benefit you as now you try to turn the page and recruit here to Arkansas? Well, you know, when you do everything you can to help a young man, you hold him accountable, you challenge him, you sometimes are aggressive but they know you care enough to keep them doing what they're doing. And they also know you never blame players when you lose, never. You take responsibility as a grown man, you take responsibility. You never throw a player under the bus. And they know that. And they know I've stood up for every one of them. So at this point, my guess would be, and I haven't seen it, I haven't looked at the uh, internet, I'm not a big internet guy, um, but if you tell me that they're, they were saying good stuff that makes me feel good, makes me, it confirms what we're doing and how we're doing it. Coach, hi, Robin Hearn, 5 News. I know you say you're not a big internet guy, but you seem social media savvy. Have you thought of a new at name yet? A new what? Twitter <laughs> at name. It's at UK. Have you thought of a new name yet for Twitter? L okay, so. <laughs> Let me start by telling you, folks, I don't have a computer. I don't have a computer. I have an iPad because when I travel, there's movies on it. But also because I can put film on it and tape and stuff, 
and I know how to get most cases an iPad. I don't have a computer. I have never done Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, chit chat, whatever they are. <laughs> I have never done those myself. So I've always had someone do it. Now I'll tell them what to put out. Now, the responses are none of my business. If you like it, you don't like it, it is not my business. I don't care. And if you want to get nasty, have at it, go to bed mad, but I didn't read it. So you're asking me something, to be honest, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> but we, I think social media is great for the fans. Did, did they put out the, the poster I talked about? Is that crazy? It was behind my desk. And my assistant says, did you look behind you? And I looked, and it was Nolan Richardson and Corliss. And I'm like, this is crazy. And I sent it to Coach Richardson. He said, I don't look like me. It does look like him. It looks just like him. <laughs> Coach Andrew Hutchinson with Best of Arkansas Sports. Uh, this state's given you a couple of pretty good players through the years at Kentucky. I'm just Malik curious. hit me, said he's coming in the building. <laughs> Marcus hit me, too. I'm curious that there's some really good talent coming up through the state, so you can't talk specifics. But what's kind of your approach to maybe the in-state recruiting? Are those you know, extra priority, or is it more just a national approach? That's the approach? first place you look. Are they good kids, and are they good enough? If they are, we'll recruit them. I did the same thing at Kentucky. Derek Willis, Dominic Hawkins. Some of them are different paths now. It may take them a little longer, but so what? Those kids are all professional. Uh, Reed, Shepard. I mean, why did he take him? What did he not? He's never going to play him. He's not. He, 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 he's, what? I play the best players. Well, you didn't start him. He's fine. He's going to be a lottery pick. How about that? But I'll do the same here. Archie Goodwin was a good player for us. Malik was a really good player for us. I have to tell you, Malik never thought he took a bad shot. And the reason was because he got it off. What do you mean? What are you doing? You got two people. I got it off. I mean, but one of the greatest kids, really smart. His mother already hit me. I'm making, I'm cooking. Marcus already called me. Mom's going to cook for us. So, you know, it, she said she's coming to practice. I love it. Come on. And, and I just told Coach Owens, who I was with at Kansas, my, my first job. I was a volunteer assistant. So you know what a volunteer makes, right? That's what I, how I started with Ted Owens. Um, he was here tonight. Isn't that great? I mean, he came from Tulsa to be here. So I got it. You got it, your hand up, and I can't. Who? Why aren't they giving you a mic? Are you somebody I should know? <laughs> okay. Plus more Fox 16 than the Buzz and Little Rock 103.7. You mentioned Nolan Richardson a minute ago. You mentioned him out there. The conversation, you never got to it. How did that go? If you'd share any of that with us. He, when I asked. Hunter and I asked John, may have asked somebody else, what did Coach Richardson say about me being hired? And he said, what he said was, a great hire because he cares about kids. Made my day. Made my day. And then I called, I sent him the poster, and then I called him. He sounds great. He sounds like he always sounded. Now, I haven't been in his company yet, but I'm telling you what I heard. And we talked about the game where he got smashed. And uh, he laughed. He said, you know what? You, and that, it just shows you anybody can beat anybody in one game. We beat, they had the team back. They had 10 guys. We beat their brains in. It was 30. He knew, he knew what happened in the game. We talked about it. He talked about his players. And I told him, you're always welcome here. I had Coach Hall at almost every practice I had before he got ill, tell me to play the one three one. I imagine he'll tell me you gotta press more. Uh, Brandon Marcello, twenty four seven sports and CBS sports. I was wondering, I know seventeen years ago you had the opportunity to maybe come here and you provided the reason why you didn't, but have you ever thought back to what your life would have been like if you decided to leave then and what Arkansas would have been like over the years? I haven't. Um, I don't want to get all spiritual on you. I'm Catholic. Um, 
making sure we have a Catholic church here in town. Hunter said we got one on campus, but uh, I think you're moved like I was moved to come here. You don't know why until you look back and they say, here's why. You know, why was I pushed to Kentucky? No idea, but I was. And why was I pushed here? Why did we get together? Why did John Tyson even pick up the phone and call me? And I'm not saying no to John. Now, I'm not telling, he ain't telling me to take a job or not, but if he wants me to do something, I'm going to listen because he's been a great friend of mine. Why did it happen? I even asked him, why would you even call me? He said, because I didn't want to live with regrets, knowing that I could call you and I could get you to meet with Hunter. That's what he said to me. He said, well, thank you. So why did it happen? If you believe what I believe, things happen for a reason. You're pushed to areas. There's something that I'm supposed to do here. I don't want my tombstone to have how many wins or Hall of Fame or national ch I want it to be about how many lives you've touched and changed and made for the positive. So why? I don't know. What would have happened back then? Hopefully something really good that I was able to be involved in and help and, and do. Hey, Coach Scotty Bordelon with Natty State Sports. Uh, you talked earlier tonight out there about being a player's first coach. Who in your life embedded that in you? Larry Brown told me early in my career, um, if you care about the kids, authentically care about the kids. And this was when I was at Kansas with him. You'll always have a job because they'll always want to play for you. And whatever you do, they'll want to come to you. They'll want to play. If you authentically care, and the great thing about kids, they can smell it. They know you're fraud. They know it. They're not. And that's what he taught me early. And do you add value? If you add value to young people, you're always going to have a job. That means someone's going to say, I want him to coach my guys. And I've lived by the two things, good people and care. Care more than anybody else. Now, caring doesn't mean you're soft. Caring doesn't mean you're good. Come on, you watch me, coach. Have you ever been in my practices, anybody here? Bob, you never were in a practice? I was never invited. Well, you wouldn't have been. <laughs> you would have scouted. I'm not going to do that. But, I mean, they're hard. Now, I don't swear and cuss and throw balls and punch. That's not who I am. But the standard is really high. And my job is to help them do stuff they didn't think they could do and then let them feel good about that. And that's what I try to do. Um, folks, is this it? Good. Um, I didn't mean that. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, really appreciate everything today and um, one of the things I told that the, the couple players that were part of the team stuff, I, I feel bad for them. Like I feel bad that they're going through this. Now would they have gone through it whether the coach left? I feel bad that my guys are going through it. But it's different than it was 10 years ago, five years ago, four years ago. They now have the ability to do what they choose to do. So um, I'm looking forward to this. You could tell I'm excited. Um, the fans seem to be excited. Um, I haven't coasted down. I don't have a team. Please, let me get stuff together. Then we'll all be excited. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you.